you've ever seen an F1 race on a YouTube video or actually seen one in person, you probably know those cars are f And that's because their engines can make a thousand horsepower. But what if I told you F1 cars don't actually make a thousand horsepower? And the reason we still use horsepower today is because of one guy's bad math. But in order to get there, we gotta turn back time a little. Back in the 1770s, there was a pretty famous engineer by the name of James Watt. Fun fact, the energy measurement we use on all our electronics and light bulbs called a watt came from the same guy. Back when horses were still the main form of transportation and steam engines weren't powerful enough to get rid of them, Watt decided he wanted to beat both of those problems with a new type of steam engine he'd invent. One that used new things like the condenser, which would take steam from the main cylinder, turn it back into water, and recycle it. It also used planetary gears, which helped convert linear motion back and forth with circular rotational motion for spinning things, since most steam engines at the time limited their uses to linear motion. His version of the steam engine was actually super efficient, way better than his competitor's steam-wasting versions. But there was a problem. His steam engine was only being purchased by people who already had steam engines, which wasn't that many people. But because he knew the same people who were buying his engines originally had other steam engines they'd bought before, steam engines they'd bought to replace their horses, he now knew who to advertise to. The horses. So every day, Watt would walk over to his local brewery and watch the horses that they used there to mill slash break apart ingredients for different beers. And after watching for a while, he did some math. He found that horsepower equals force times distance over time. And with his observations and his formula, he found that one horsepower was equal to 550 pounds per foot per second. That's like moving a typical male lion which can weigh around 550 pounds one foot per second. But here's every reason why he was completely wrong. That number he came up with isn't correct, plus it's rounded. That's because it's based on a very specific type of horse breed, the Shetland Pony. When you think about the word horse, what comes to mind? Did it look like this? Because this is a thoroughbred horse. This is what horsepower should be based off of. Now here's what's confusing. Shetland ponies or pit ponies were actually bred for coal mines. At the time it was known by well-known math, a single pit pony could transport around 220 pounds of coal, 100 feet up a mine shaft in one minute. With his horsepower equation, that works out to 367 pounds per foot per second. Now what about a thoroughbred? So he took 367 and he times it by 0.5 because he believed that thoroughbreds were 50% stronger than pit ponies. He got that number, and then he just basically added that to the original. 0.5 plus 367, and then that's that's the number he got. That that that's that's it. He he that's that that's all the work he did. That's that's what horsepower is equal to. Another problem is that he used averages. They were based on the average amount of work a horse could do in a day. And because he used averages, by his own math, in short bursts, a single horse could put out somewhere around 15 horsepower. So by just doing guesswork and then deflating the definition of a horsepower with averages, he snake oiled his own buyers, which unluckily continues today with car manufacturers faking horsepower numbers. But instead of giving up, now that we know one horsepower really isn't one horsepower, what are some options that'll help us get our lost horses back? Well, if we're talking about a car, there's a few things other than just your engine that are willing to help us. Number one, aerodynamics. Why do aerodynamics matter? Good aero reduces the amount of air particles that hit your car or the amount of drag it's subjected to. Imagine a bullet hitting a flat target. All the force the bullet was fired with is placed on the flat surface since the bullet has nowhere else to go. Now, imagine if it was sloped instead. Here the bullet ricochets off, and some of the force the bullet was fired with isn't even dissipated onto the surface. Rather, it keeps the bullet moving. Number two, traction. Why does traction matter? That's why. Traction allows your tires to take full advantage of the power they receive from the engine. And it really depends whether or not your car is rear-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, or all-wheel drive. Without it, your tires would spin, and you really wouldn't be pulling yourself anywhere. Number three, weight. Why does weight matter? More weight equals more things to move, which equals more energy needed to move it. Question, if a Lamborghini and a bike raced, who would win? A Lamborghini with a horsepower around 600, or the bike with a horsepower around 150. Luckily, we don't even have to wonder. 
See, while the Lamborghini has around 600 horsepower, it also weighs around 3,000 pounds. This means it needs more power to rotate its wheels and gain momentum. The bike weighs around 440 pounds. It also has smaller and lighter wheels in the Huracan, which makes its wheels way easier to rotate and allows it to do stuff like this. All right, well, I, I don't know what else to talk about. Bye.